So you live in this hotel? Basically, we skip between this hotel and the house we rent at the north. So we skip between three cities, actually, for the last year. 44 years ago, I was born in Kiryat Shmona, the northern city in Israel, on the border with Lebanon. I lived there until one year ago when the war started. Tell us about what happened on October 7th. On October 7th, it was Saturday morning. We turned on the news and we saw all this craziness that going out on the south. We understood that something is going to happen on the north border. On the next day in the morning, we had to understand where we are going to flee, to run away from Kiryat Shmona. And I called to a good friend of mine and I asked her, do you have some place for me to run away with my two children and my father? And we took one bag and we went from there. This is what the last uh, year has been for us, packing our life in one suitcase and moving from one place to another. How long did you actually think you weren't going to be able to go home? Maybe a few days, maybe two weeks. Never in our worst dreams didn't think that one year, it's a long time for us not to be at home. Why is Kiryat Shmona a dangerous place to be when there's war? Because we are actually standing on the border with Lebanon. That was our main anxiety. We were afraid that someone is going to come to our beds and kill us in our homes. So we had to go away from there. You understood you had to leave the home that you grew up in your entire life that you chose to raise your children in out of fear that you wouldn't be able to keep them safe. It's crazy because when, when, when you go away from your home to survive, I don't think that it's gonna be like, you know, a whole year. It's children with schools and your, your bed and your friends and your community. My home, I don't know if I can call it home anymore. You think you can ever feel safe there again after everything that's been going on? Over 8,000 rockets being fired into Israel from Lebanon? I don't think I can feel safe there. And as a mother, I can tell you that I think it would be very stupid to take children to live there and sleep there. But I that's mean, where you grew up. That's your entire life. That's your family. That's... I slowly disconnected from all what you are saying, from my house, from where I grew up, from where my children was born, because that's the only way I can survive, you know? The place I grew up is, is, is not safe for me anymore. What has this experience been like for your children? And how do you explain to them that you don't know if you're ever gonna be able to go back to the place that they grew up and their house and their rooms because you don't know if you can protect them there? They are very sad about it, that they cannot go back to their room, not now and God knows when. It's my house and it's where I lived and it's where I was born, so I, was, I wanna be there. Explain to me what it's like when you've gone back. My body couldn't bear the feeling and the, and the noise and the bombs and the airplanes and the alarms. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to do that to my, do that to my children. They don't have to feel this way, not for one minute. I mean, today it's a ghost town. It's a ghost town. There's almost nobody there. It's Everybody that you town. know, your friends, your family, no one's there. No one's there. No one is there for a year. Everyone left. At this point, is it even safe to stay anywhere? in the north? The answer is no. We ran away again to Tel Aviv to go farther from the north. It's like a war everywhere. I haven't slept for four days. I can't put my head on my pillow and fall asleep quietly. What is life like on a daily basis? I mean, how often are you guys moving from house to house? How are your kids able to go to school? We don't have a normal routine. Most of the time, my kids are meeting their teachers on Zoom. They don't meet them face to face. Their mind is not actually there. It's a very tough year to ask from a child to be a student. When your life is not in your hands, it's like I live, but I don't, you know, live life as I should be. When you hear rocket alerts over and over and over again, some people would think, do you get used to that? Is there a way to get used to kind of being constantly under fire? Are your kids used to that? You can never get used to that. Can you explain what the feeling is like when you experience that? You, you, don't, you just want to go somewhere safe. Feel safe. You're, you're seeking safety. And it's, it's, not, it's not fun. Not fun at all. You were here in Tel Aviv when Hezbollah fired a ballistic missile a 
couple of days ago. What was it like for your family mm. to wake up to a siren in Tel Aviv when you think that this is where you're supposed to be safe? Well, it's something you cannot describe because uh, when you want to feel safe and you believe that you came to a place that you feel safe, the last thing you want to happen you want to happen that you're going to go to the feeling again. And I, I ran to the door, I opened the door, I opened my children's door, my, my, my children's room's door, and I said to them, children, get up, get up, come on, come on, come on. And I didn't even tell them, uh, we have alarm, we have messages, get up, get up. I didn't have to say that. I tell them just get up, get up, and they understood immediately what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And we just took ourselves and ran away in the stairs to the shelter. Lucky we have shelter in here. And it's like you feel it's everywhere. You cannot run from this. Why do you think the world hasn't seemed to care that Hezbollah has been attacking your home in northern Israel for almost a year now? And we're only now hearing anger now that Israel is defending itself. I think that the world forgets that we are regular people, wants to live regular life and wants to feel normal in the place we choose to live. The world doesn't see people to people. This is the place I was born in, you know? We don't deserve to get bombed like 30 and 40 years without no one get up and say, hey, they are people, they are, they are, they are individuals, they are children, they are grandfathers and grandmothers. They want to have families, they want to have a normal life like every community in the world. On the other edge of the border, they have people there as well. They are people too. We don't want war. We want to live. We deserve better life. We deserve to be normal people. What would your final message be to the world, to those who don't understand what your family has been going through? We have a right to be, we have a right to live, we have a right for normal life. We have the right to grow our children in safe environment. We have the right to be happy, to smile, and to protect ourselves. I don't think we need to ask anyone in the world if we can protect ourselves or not. We deserve that. We deserve to be alive.